Good Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com podcast with Rob Lewis, Jesse Simonton, and Austin Price and Brent Hubbs. Glad to have you along with us on this Tuesday. Obviously, plenty of things to get to, uh, plenty of things to jump into as Tennessee uncompetitive in a 34-3 loss to Florida. Uh, let's don't, we won't have to rehash the Florida game, but I'm going to ask this one simple question. Um, and there's no simple answer to it, but this is will, this will a jumping off point for us. Jeremy Pruitt in an open date. What are you doing? What's your first move? How, how are you going about? How, how are you going about fixing this now? Crickets. I mean, you got to somebody. You know, I guess. And you know, you described it as you know everybody wants a, you know, a public hanging. That's Bobby Bowden's line, by the way. Whatever. You you said it uh, off off uh, off podcast air, so I'll just repeat it. Uh, yeah. It, it, I think you have to have some type of show of that, whether that's a move at the quarterback position, a move on your staff. We've not seen that, so I don't think you're going to see that. Um, you know, a move somewhere, you know, because you just continue down this road of, you know, no change. You know, and then Jesse's highlighted the fact that, I mean, like everybody wants this youth movement, and it's true outside of, outside of the two positions, you know. And really, I don't even know if you could go with a true youth movement of safety outside of maybe going with, you know, Jalen McCullough, but I, the quarterback's position is the only position you can do that you know you feel like is going to excite some people. All right, or well, that hasn't happened yet. That's the thing is that it's already happening everywhere else. I mean, to your point, I mean, I, I, I think there's going to be a, if you're going to do something, it's going to be a change at quarterback. The question is, do you just hand the keys to Maurer, or do you do what I would think is the smart thing? If you're gonna if you're gonna move on from Garantano. Then you do so with the knowledge that perhaps the ceiling of the team's higher, but probably the floor is lower. So why not play both kids and let Maurer and Trout decide it on the field the next three weeks and figure out who your guy is when you play South Carolina and go into the month of November? Because it was just nine days ago that Jeremy Pruitt stood up here after the Chattanooga game and said there was zero separation between Maurer and Trout, that he thought they did some good things and made some quote-unquote horrible decisions that if it was the BYU game, it would have been Shrout that went in, not Maurer. Uh, so if we don't know which one of those guys is better, obviously Maurer has more athleticism, can do some stuff with his legs. Shrout has you know, more just pure arm talent. I'd play them both. Let them take their lumps. It's going you know, to be an uphill battle anyways. Georgia, Alabama, two in the next three weeks. But figure out who you have from the month of November. And, where and you just can, dumb it, was all, it was also just nine days ago that he – scolded the media yes and saying you know you guys don't know everything jerry garantano is our quarterback until he's not until he's not <laughs> rob is 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 it at the point that he's not your quarterback I, mean, I don't think i don't think it matters is what the sad part is i mean who's they don't have a quarterback who's gonna i mean my um i was having this car i mean i don't think you just throw it all on Meyer and, and make it i mean have him start against against georgia i mean i don't think that's fair to the kid i mean that's going to be a, that's going to be a beat down no matter who you play if peyton manning comes back at 23 <laughs> years old this he's going to lose that game by four touchdowns with, with what they got i just i mean i think you play mauer or shroud whoever emerges as your clear number two but i mean i, I start working mauer in or shroud in whoever you think is you know going to be the better of those two the rest of the way because I mean, frankly, who are you going to beat if you play one of those guys other than Jared Quarantano if he's going to play the way he has the first four games? I guess my, my point is that if one of those two kids is your starter for the next eight games instead of Jared, what, what's going to be the difference in the outcomes? Maybe Vandy, maybe South Carolina. I mean, I don't – But I, mean, I, 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 I see what you're saying, that, you know, it's, it's not like Brian Maurer's the answer. We, we have no, belief, you know, you, no but, proof of that. But I think – you got to start finding out because right. this year's but, the, because, this year's at the tank. But you've got to sell. Look, if if you look around, I mean, the one place fans can grasp hope for from is the quarterback position. That's where people grab. Because look, not enough people, fans, media people out there can look and go, man, they're really getting a lot better at right guard. They're really getting a lot better at at, at you know at their at their linebacker position in in, in coverage. You know. People don't. I mean, you're not. You're not. You're not basing improvement on that. What are you going to base improvement on? Is points on the scoreboard and quarterback play? Because everybody looks at that. You got to give hope, right? You got to give somebody some hope. Well, you do. And, and as Rob said, I think the the biggest note in all of this is, you know, and it's probably what I missed Saturday night after the game. 
because I do still think as far as trying to get a win, a win, Garantano is your best option. I don't care if you let any scoring drive Saturday or not. He'll move the football. Now, he's gonna make, he, if he play, continues to play the way he's played, you're talking about boneheaded decisions and bad throws and late throws and everything else. But the, the one thing I missed Saturday night when Jesse and I were doing the podcast after the game is what Rob just noted. This season's over. It is. I mean, the thought of them trying to get to a bowl game is laughable. Six wins? I think I mean, who, what four SEC teams are going to be. Correct. And so, I mean, they have to get into 500 in league play. Well, have, outside, outside of the two years of Bush, how many times has that happened in the decade? I think two, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's basically that. So, I, I think you do go with Maurer. Or, or as Jesse's noted, play both. Um, you know, and I noted this, you know, Sunday on the board. If I'm Jerry Garantano, I see the writing on the wall. You know, a couple of years ago, he was Maurer and those guys that people were clamoring to see. And let's move on from Quentin Dormady. Now he's Quentin Dormady. Well, I mean, everybody, everybody loves the backup. Sure they do. Because that's where, that's where hope, hope rests and resides in the guy not playing. Okay. So th- the question becomes to me, if you're this coaching staff, are you given, are you going to make a change to try to give some hope? Or do you believe that you can do something you haven't done in four games and give your offense a pulse with Jared as your quarterback? Well, yeah, I mean, it- Here's what makes no sense, or makes little sense to me, though, is that Jeremy, I think, made the correct decision at halftime to pull JG, but then after three series decided, threw his hands up and said, in a game that was already lost, put him back in. And, I mean, Expl- I- and that, that, now we didn't, his press conference wasn't long enough to ask that after the game, but that was a strange decision. I don't think what else is bad. Why not and, put in Trout? And you, you noted this. I mean, they Cheney called the game like he had a fifth-year senior under under center on on the road. I mean, when yeah, he, he thought he had Jake Fromm still. He, he threw, I mean, he it did eleven they, times in a row with Mauer. Yeah. I mean, after I, after after they hadn't run the ball at all in the first half, Eric Gray comes out, had one touch in the first thirty minutes of the game, gets eleven yards the first two plays, and then they just start dropping back and throwing. Now they did two RPOs early. Which got you got the big slant to Brandon Johnson, but after that it was a lot of just like I mean, standard I mean, gun stuff. The game was over. I mean, it didn't matter, but you didn't help the kid. I mean, I, I don't think you really saw. You know, you didn't give him a chance to be successful. I mean, he. I mean, and I don't think I don't think Mauer's ready at, at, at all. But I'm I'm like I'm 100 percent on board with what Brent said. But find out what you got. I mean, just you know, start. You know, I mean. The likelihood is, is, and I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade on the kid, but the, at this point in his career, Mauer and or Shrout are, are going to be a lot like Will McBride was a couple of years ago. They're going to make a few throws, and you're going to go, whoa. And then they're going to make a bunch of boneheaded decisions, and you're going to go, okay. But able really to see ready. over the line. Okay, yes. <laughs> but, but, no, but, I mean, the point is, is like, I mean, I don't, again, I go back to they don't really have anybody. They have nobody. Well, you know, I think for Tennessee fans, they, they, I'm with you, but I think for Tennessee fans, the baffling thing, not baffling, but one of the surprising things is, and there was so much hope, Jesse, about Jim Chaney over the summer because he made it work with Nathan Peterman. He made it work with Matt Sims. He made it work Crompton. with Tyler Bray. He made it, he fixed Jonathan Crompton. He did it with a freshman and Fromm, who probably wasn't ready. Now, now, Fromm's a really good player, okay, but he did it with a freshman on the road. You know, it, no, I mean, he's done it with so many quarterbacks. So the question becomes, why can't they get something out of that position? Why can't he get an offense, piece together an offense, put a, put a plan together, create an identity for an offense that creates some kind of productivity out of the quarterback position? I, look, I've been, I've been hard on, on JG at times, for sure. Uh, and I, you know, pointed out his limitations, but there is none of us can answer why it has just completely gone off the rails this season. He's the one guy he wasn't a year ago. I he mean, turning it over. But I mean, it's just it. I have no idea why he doesn't look anything. Again, he had his issues a year ago, but he was at least a functional quarterback. I have no idea what what's going on. It's just. Perhaps we'll know in six, you know, who knows if stuff eventually kind of comes out. 
But it's been mystified. You know, this is, what was it? Just a couple months ago, he was out there tweeting Jim Cheney's offense with all the fire emojis and all this kind of stuff. And, I mean, it's, th- th- those two guys have not connected. Whatever the, is going on in the quarterback room with Chris Winkie, that doesn't seem to be working. Um, Look, yeah. but, but, I mean, like you said, it's, it, it's and, tough. And it's, am I the only one that, that, that sees this, that, that, that scratches my head on this? Jared's best performance a year ago was throwing some deep balls up for grabs at, at Auburn. He didn't went, they went deep at all. Okay, so in the Florida in the Florida game, you throw essentially two nine routes. Okay, now he had he had Dominique Wood Anderson completely missed that one. It's a high school throw. Look, that one's been we've seen all the footage of that. The guy who's <laughs> shooting it from his home video camera, you know, in the back. This is a Bruder film. Zone, you know, this is a Bruder film from the swamp. Well, I mean, whatever. But but why in that game? is the only two outside the hash deep shots you take, you took with a freshman quarterback who couldn't keep the ball in bounds when he threw it. What, why, why did you never take a shot with a quarterback in Jared who's gotten better throwing the deep ball? He threw the deep ball okay a year ago. At least he kept it in bounds and gave a guy a chance to go make a play, get a pass interference penalty call. I, I don't, it, oh, it, I, I it, think it, that, nothing has a rhythm to, it, it's, it's like on offense, that everything's jumbled up on a you know a bunch of cards laying in the middle of the table, and you're just you're just grabbing straws. You're playing pickup sticks. I mean, it's it's grasping at straws. It, it, it there's no flow. There's nothing to it that you go. Well, they can't that makes sense. they that can't makes score sense. in the red zone, and yet they have a quarterback. I know it was not Jarrett's totally. I mean, he threw it 100 miles an hour, but Jawan should have caught the ball. But how many times in the red zone do they keep having to throw it with a quarterback who is now looking at the other team's jerseys more often than not? Keep throwing it in the middle of the field instead of just throwing a fade to Callaway. But best ball he threw in week one. Yeah. Right. And they haven't gone back to it. I mean, I, Callaway I, I, has a fifty-five percent. Uh, um, this will be in the PFS stats later today. Fifty-five percent reception uh, on targets this season, lowest of his career, and he doesn't have a drop this season. Like they just they they just can't get him the ball because they either throw it out of bounds or they don't throw it to him. No, I, I mean, <laughs> or you know. Apparently Saturday he couldn't get open. I mean, he couldn't beat press coverage. I don't know. Rob, I mean, to sit here and say four games into this season that this this team, this offense has zero identity and defensively they're, they're, you know, they can't essentially do anything this system's supposed to, or can do very little this system's supposed to do. I don't know which is more surprising, defensive struggles or the fact that they just have no offensive identity. For me, it's the offensive identity. I mean, that I, they don't know who they are. I think, golly. I they don't, don't know what they are. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, man. I mean, I would probably say offensively just because you've got a, a guy, a quarterback who's been in your program for four years and an offensive coordinator you just paid $5 million to. I think it was reasonable to expect that between those two, you come up with a plan. I mean, I didn't expect Tennessee to score 35 points a game and no, play. But, you, you but, but I did expect I did expect the offense to be to have to carry the team more often than not, and that has not been the case. I mean, you got a bunch of veteran wide receivers, you got a veteran quarterback, and, and you've got again a guy you just paid five million dollars to to come in and call plays. And the and, offensive and line, and they're, and they're terrible. And the offensive line, while inconsistent, still has been better on the whole than it was a year ago. The quarterbacks aren't getting killed every play. I mean, JG has had each week they've taken some sacks, but it, it, it has not been just a you know a turnstile out. The of pocket tackles. has been more. He's intact finished than four been. games in a row. I don't know yeah. if he did that anything exactly. last year. Well, he didn't finish that. Well, yeah, he didn't finish that. He wasn't. I mean, he wasn't knocked out. out. He wasn't knocked out. out. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, he was. He wasn't. He exactly. wasn't physically knocked out. Yeah, the game. and and again, Calvert's gonna. I, I mean, I wrote it. I think it. I wrote it two weeks ago. They let Calvert take his lumps. The upside is there. He's going to. Ha- he had issues in pass protection Saturday, but let him take his lumps. But to your point about the plan, no identity. Darnell Wright practices at guard for the last ten days, and Calvert goes out, and they just move Darnell Wright back to tackle instead of putting Tatum in. Instead of putting. What Tatum does that tell you about Tatum? And then, but then Tatum does come in. That was the thing. It, it, there's just no, again, the plan it, makes no again, sense. Again, it's just we're, it, it feels like they're it's just, just a like, grab bag. Let, let's try this. That didn't work. Okay, let's try this. You mean that that's how, you mean how they do in practice? Oh, you play defense. Now tomorrow you play offense. You know, I mean, I mean that's Kenneth the thing George that feels starts. 
and plays 41 solid snaps and then only plays the last nine snaps of the game on Saturday when Bryce Thompson, I'm, I'm, Rust absolutely had to have been a factor there, but he was getting torched. Goes uh, back, but goes back to the point on Bryce Thompson we talked about in the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Why did you not play him against Chattanooga? If you had the green light to do it, yeah. I mean, he didn't even dress. I mean, why, why, why not knock off some rust there as opposed to his first action being, you know, in, in, you know, in the Florida game? The, the, the case, yes, it was dismissed, but that hadn't happened before Florida. I mean, so, so they said, hey, get through the, get through the Chattanooga game before we're going to let him dress? Yeah, that, 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 I mean, that doesn't, again, just, uh, just head, head scratching stuff. That, that you're trying to figure out. Can this, can this staff, can this team this week find their best 22? Do they need to find their best 22? Is the yo-yoing of guys that you just mentioned, is that, is that a detriment to this football team? I, I mean, I think it's got to be. I mean, for the kids. I mean, I, mean, I, th- I, I just think every, everything functions better, whether it's basketball, football, whatever, if you have defined roles and you know what to expect. And, I mean, you're, you're third, of, third of the way through the season right now, and, and you don't have defined roles at, I mean, all over the place. And, and we'll obviously see if some other stuff comes out here you know, in the near future. But it, when Will Ignat doesn't even travel, and you have, and Pruitt has been on record multiple times saying, we want to play more guys an inside linebacker, and then you decide to play. Again, I think Toa Toa is the future. I think he's going to be a really good player. But he and Batuli played all but like three snaps on Saturday. I, think, I mean, I know Jeremy said we traveled the guys that felt like it was. I think Ignat told him he was out before they even made the trip to Florida. But was it because he was it because that he basically said your third team or your second team or whatever? I mean, like, it. it I mean, I, so Jeremy so Banks has two interceptions against Chattanooga and doesn't play. He got dinged up late in the week. So let, 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 let he played, me. played special teams. Yeah, I know he played special so, teams. So yeah, let, me, just, let, let me ask this then. Where, where are you in trying to, with the notion of who, who all is all in, who, who's, who's not all in? Is, is that part of what we're seeing? Is, I do think is, there's some toxic is, stuff going on behind is, the is, scenes. Is, is, is Will Ignat? You know, talking about leaving, you know, coming out of the Chattanooga game, you know, or, or says he's going to leave or whatever, and, and 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 Jeremy says, okay, you're not traveling. Is, is that his way of saying, hey, I, you know, I want 70 who are all in, who who are going and are all in, or, or you're not going to go. Well, did, did you, did, I mean, is it to the point you draw that line in the sand? Well, I, the problem is perhaps that line has been drawn before, but then Jeremy's trying to circle back and trying to get some guys who perhaps he poo-pooed, whether it was last year, this year, whatever, and then those guys are like, really? I mean, that, that's the problem. We're now – I mean, you see the guys at Houston. They're, they're, we're at the four-game mark. You can, you can do the – you can do the – you can take your red shirt. And, and, it just so happen, and it just so happens that Tennessee's bye week comes yes. after the four-game yes. mark. Yes, and is, so – And so I would not be surprised if multiple guys decide to explore options. And I, but I, and I would be surprised if it mattered. I mean, who's going to leave that's a difference Well, maker? you're right. Now, I'll say this. There's, to me, it's easy to sell – the Ignots, Shannon Reeds, uh, Solon Pages, those guys that were, you know, recruited by the previous say, staff. Gonna say, who's going to leave that have not played? But if it's a Jeremy guy that leaves, that's a different deal in my mind. I, the whole thing that, it is. Let me come on. Well, I, I, but I think, I think how is it not a big deal though when th- this is a roster that already has depth issues? Saying, I mean, I mean, not getting those numbers back. Yeah. But to me, it's easy to this sell. This is four games in a year two. Four games in a year right. two, and you may be you could lose multiple guys for the depth that you you never get those scholarships back. You right. get twenty five. Right. I mean, it's not like you can go back and sign thirty this year to replace but somebody. I mean, who are they going to lose? I mean, that, I mean but, but, the, but, but the scholarships, again, right? But they're bad evaluations. I mean, who are they going to lose? It's big time SEC player. But but nobody. But, but, I, I can't. But I mean, you, but when you're talking, you don't to, want to get into a world where you're having to play guys both ways. But when you know, my thing mean, though with is your it, numbers, my thing is they do. You have a perception. To your to your future recruiting there you class, go. that hey, wait a minute. If five guys leave, you know, or this guy's a bunch of these guys are are, are bailing out here. Now, 
if if it's non if it's if, if it's, it's non players that, that Butch Scott right if it's players that Jeremy didn't recruit he can come back and sell you know hey that's but, right but these are also guys you, they didn't leave you after year one when they were quote non Jeremy guys they've they've had a year and a half to beat to become Pruitt guys and they end up leaving I think from a perception standpoint I agree from a talent standpoint they gonna are they gonna lose somebody who's gonna you know rack up ten tackles and be <laughs> no. a difference Help in winning the football Alabama. game absolutely not. But at the same time, too, if you start having those guys leave, I think you have a lot of people out there who are going to ask a lot of questions, and you're further giving a ton of ammunition out there to everybody else, you know, to, to, to recruit against you. And I think that perception's a tough I, look. I think they've given everybody plenty of ammunition already. They have. I just think, too, I just think, I, to me, it's just part of, you can't, and it's a delicate balance for every new coach, but you can't come in and do the your guys, my guys deal. It just doesn't work. And now with the with the way the scholarships are, whether they're good enough to beat Alabama or not, you better have enough damn guys to practice. <laughs> like, like, well, and the redshirt rule play. I mean, plays into that hugely. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's just the nature of college football across the board. Everywhere right now, people are sitting there going, oh, I, I, "I probably need to get out of here." I, you know, I can get out of here. You know, I. My thing is the, the the recruiting ramifications of all this to me is just I go back to year one when you know I, I thought it, it, I thought he made the right call on a lot of those in-state guys a year ago maybe not with he probably should have handled it with more kid gloves than he did but I still think you don't take all those guys but you know it's it slowed them in state and I think they still never really kind of got that momentum in state. Like, you know, they've gotten Cooper and they've gotten, you know, Keyshawn in this class. But, I mean, like, when you look at, you know, where you're at on the whole, you know, if you're going to salvage this class with him as the head coach, the, the in-state guys are going to be where you're going to do that. Keep what you got and then add Jay Hardy, Tyler Barron. I think, and I, I've had this conversation with somebody last night, you know, you didn't really want Martavis French this whole time. David Johnson's kind of kept you on life support in that one. Constantly contacting, just showing just enough. To me, that's a, that, that, if you're going to have spots in this class going th with the road that you're going down, I would, I would go after a guy like Martavis French right now All right, we, to we, help get Bryson Eason, which would help you get Omari Thomas. Okay, let's, let's, let's hold on recruiting for a second because I want to circle back to defense before we jump into some of this recruiting Here's stuff. Here's a positive defense. I, I, the run defense was good on Saturday. Yeah. They, well, they, they played their gaps. They, they, they won some one-on-one -on -one battles. Now, the same guys in the front four couldn't get any pass rush, and that's why they had to blitz Patuli, and that caused some other problems. But I thought Butler played probably the best snaps he's played in his career. Uh, they got Garland, Garland showed, Garland showed, some, showed up. Emerson had a bounce-back game after struggling the last couple of weeks. So that's at least a positive going into when you obviously you don't face – you know, some really good running backs. But the isn't next Butler weeks. still like is, is, is baffling a thing? You don't really play like the first three weeks. And also oh, I know. He's out there. And that's, I mean, that's Hubs' yo yo. I mean, that's Hubs' yeah, yo yo. I mean, they, they can't decide. And I don't think it needs to be, you know, you said find your best 22. I don't think it's about that. I think it's more, they, they're going to play 30, you know, 40 well, guys, whatever. Yeah, but, but find your rotation. Yes. I mean, I, I mean so, solidify that right, rotation. Solidify who's going to play. Speaking of it, I mean, Kirat Gar Garland a month ago was in the transfer portal, and he's probably maybe your third best defensive lineman in Gainesville on he, Saturday. I think the last two weeks he's been their best defensive lineman on the whole. It's remarkable. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I mean, to, now I'll say this: that's a guy that this staff believed, even though they moved him to the offensive line and some stuff, they believed he could play. You know, and and they're starting. He's starting to get something out of him. I think for this defense, the question. Everybody's asking that the question I ask is, how do you improve the safety play? If you have to blitz, okay, to get pressure, which they do, I'm no football expert, but you can't line your safeties up 20 yards off the ball and have them backpedaling if you're blitzing everybody in the middle of the football field. What do you do at safety? How do you clean up the safety play? Because if you're going to give a void to the middle of the football field, Everybody's going to play seven-on-seven seven football and just throw it over your head in the middle of the field like Florida did. It was wide open. They could have got it any time they wanted it. How do you fix your safety play? Is it, the, is it on the safeties? Are they, is, or is that, you know, the linebackers well, that the line, poor in coverage? The, the, well, the linebackers got picked on, and they had poor depth all day. I mean, they got sucked in multiple times 
with faux play action fakes. Mullen's whole scheme is designed to do that. Give up the three or four yard run. You live to play another down, but the, but both <clears throat> Batuli and Toa Toa, uh, I think combined they gave up seven receptions for over a hundred yards on seven targets. Uh, but Warrior was bad too. I mean, Warrior got beat the second play of the game for that forty-three yard pass. He looked lost multiple other times. He's a senior. He's played a lot of football. That 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 they. The, the defense cannot survive those sorts of busts. So that's, I mean, again, if you want a youth movement, it's happening everywhere else. Play McCullough more. McCullough did play like the last, he played a lot in the fourth quarter. Um, I, I'd give him maybe a, a, a long look early in the game. Is this team missing uh, Balaam Buchanan that much? I'm not saying that that would fix their defense. How significant is him not being there at the star position affecting Tennessee? I don't know because Schamberger's actually been kind of now maybe communication. I, you could I'm certainly I'm, I would I'm certainly the staff would probably argue that communication, especially with Batuli out the first couple of weeks, that that took a big hit. But on the whole, Schamberger's actually been pretty solid at the star. Now does does Buchanan being back allow maybe Schamberger to does, would he play safety? Uh, but I think they've kind of been gotten a surprise thus far out of out of Theo. I mean, Theo Jackson's been their best defensive back. I just know Rob the slant. If anytime anybody wants a slant, they can get a slant. Anytime they go on a deep square in, it seems like it's there. I mean, I mean Georgia State's quarterback's not very good, but he found the middle of the field open all day. Chattanooga had it open; they just couldn't catch the football. Uh, BYU didn't try enough. Well, Why they, they didn't, didn't throw overtime? It, yeah, when, they didn't overtime when they yeah. needed it. When they, when they needed it, they got it in the middle of the field. I mean, that's, two touchdowns and four plays. Tennessee's not defending inside the hash in the pass game at all. And I would have thought. Against anybody. And I think all of us probably would have thought the secondary was the most settled, sound part of the defense in August. Yeah, I mean, you got two, two kids that started at that corner as freshmen. You got a senior safety. I mean, and it's. it's well, yeah, and your head coach and it's, yeah, is it, the it, secondary guy and your defensive coordinator say, paid a million dollars to coach safe the Safe to say it's not worked out that way. Trask was 15 of 18 for 226 yards, two touchdowns, and then the tip that Theo had to Alante in the middle of the field. In the Actually, mid- between the numbers. It sounds like they weren't good in the secondary when you say it like that. Mm-hmm. It's struggling in the middle of the football field. Maybe, you know, like I said, maybe there's linebackers in there, you know. And that's I mean, it's a combination. Of, I mean, there, there's certainly, it's a, they, they did not keep their depth. But, I mean, you even watch the coaches show when, I mean, he was, he was quite frustrated at times with some of the safety play. All right, last thing about the team before we dive into some recruiting. You know, we talk about personnel changes. Uh, Austin, you mentioned it. You know, not going to make a personnel change on your coaching staff. Do you change your coaching staff from the standpoint of who's on the field, who's in the box? I mean, can that help alleviate? I mean, you don't have a linebackers coach on the field during a game to to help with any linebacker adjustments between series. I mean, nothing should be off the table, I'm assuming, this week after where you're at four games. Is that a big deal? Can you help yourself there, or is that overblown? I, I, think I it's mean, look, it's not going to help you beat Georgia and Alabama. I'm not saying that. I think, I think, it's, about for other I think it's fractional. Do they, uh, okay. I, I mean, I, I can see your point, but, I mean, it's Jeremy's defense. I mean, he, I mean in my mind, you know, he you know, he likes to tell that he can kind of do it, do it all. So, I mean, you know, if, if something needs to be done with the linebackers, then shouldn't he be able to handle it down there? I mean, I you know, I mean, I guess you could, in theory, flip Ansley and move him to the box, and and then put um, put Chair down the sideline. But you know, they all those guys have called the the game from the field. So, I, and, and they're such creatures of habit about that whole deal. Uh, Rick, can you imagine what Johnny Majors would would have done this week? Oh, somebody, somebody Brian Sherry would be coaching running backs. Somebody, Chris Winkie somebody's would be coaching would be defensive empty. backs. It'd be. Johnny Majors would have changed just to make a change. Somebody would be out of a job, and somebody would have flipped sides of the ball, and and, and all those things. I mean, that was that was certainly his reputation. So you got a football team that's got a lot of issues that you're trying to find some answers to, and then this is a week and a bye week. You know, you got players who may or may not be on this team. We'll see who's on the practice field this afternoon, and then you got coaches who are going out on the road recruiting this week. Ooh, tough sell. What's your message to recruits? And how are you selling it? I mean, I get coming. You can play early. I get all that. But how, how are you? What are I you don't sell, know how what you are you sell selling. It? It? What are you selling? Again, They're selling. Stick with us. Yeah, I think more than anything, it's you're trying to hold on to what you have, and which is why I think the in-state crop is is aesthetically hugely important. And Harrison Baylor. Yeah, I mean, hold on to what you have, 
and then and, and then you know in state four star Jay Hardy four star Tyler Barron again I go back to the Whitehaven kids I would go <laughs> four star Martavis French and that's again you've not really recruited that hard and haven't shown much interest in but if it helps you get Easton which in helps in turn helps you get Big O then you're talking about four star four star I mean I just named five four stars in state that you could potentially land that you have much have a much better chance with, and they're all in positions of need. I mean, then they Martavis French. What is he, Jesse? He's big. I mean, like they always say, you can't teach big. I mean, he's a big kid. I mean, like you know, he's got some deficiencies to his game, but is he better than DeAndre Johnson if you played him on the outside? You tell me. I don't. I mean, I don't know. They played DeAndre Johnson thirty snaps on Saturday. Is this the week where you're you go to see them? I mean, they, they've got to go see guys that I mean, they're they trying go, to hold on They to can it. go see Thayu Jones-Bell and Noah Sewell. <laughs> I mean, they can sit Niedermeyer out there on his whirlwind tour all they want. Man, they ain't getting those kids. And, I mean, you know as well as I do, I'm as optimistic as anybody. But, you know, again, you right. got to hold on what you got and then somehow okay. figure out these in-state guys. Okay, well, the point I was going to ask, the question I was going to ask is, are they? Do, do you now go see – who was quote below your recruiting line that you had below your line Beca- you because to. because you weren't there is this is now when we start to see new names pop up on the board like like the juco running back that you had in the war room last week is that what the next few weeks are going to be about recruiting for tennessee yeah i think so you know again i go back to guys like jameer gibbs i mean he's not that far from here you know i mean but that he, one's gotten a lot harder because well, of the schools that have gotten involved the, the schools you're battling there are winning no doubt about it you know but you, and anybody, you don't have a year-long relationship anybody with anybody you're battling is winning really outside of those kids from memphis that are arkansas is in on that's a fair point i mean like, point. You know, those programs are mirror images of one another train which, wreck and train wreck which which is why at some point it's not going to happen and I don't have any time soon, but at some point, the powers that be are going to have to kind of make a decision. Do they want to go public and say, We're back in Jeremy Pruitt. We're back in Jeremy Pruitt. But then you don't want to really paint yourself into a corner. I know. I, but, I think but, yeah, but, the, point but the, the way this recruiting class is going to have to be salvaged is I do think that at some point, I don't, you know, whether it's in three weeks, at the end of the season, before, you know, when you go into that December period, uh, because if Tennessee, I don't think you goes, can wait that long. if Tennessee goes three and nine, even four and eight, the most optimistic. I mean, I mean Rob, don't you don't you think when you look at? I mean, look, everybody's got Georgia as the loss, okay? So then here comes Mississippi State. If you don't win that one, don't, don't you think the week after Mississippi State's where you got to you, nah, you're going to but you're going to have to come out nah, and make a I, statement? I saw you say that. I saw you say it in the chat last night. That's not Tennessee style. I mean, their their public relations is like 1950. Stick your head in the sands and pretend like everything's fine. The house is on fire. I mean, but I mean, you know, you got. You're continuing to hear the narrative. And oh, I'm, narrative with, I'm, about, I'm with you. I mean, doesn't the athletics director have to come out at some point, at midseason, after Mississippi State? And, and look, it may be the kiss of death. Who knows? I mean, we all know what, what the proverbial vote of confidence ends up being. But from a salvaging of a recruiting class and everything else, don't you have to do something after Mississippi State? I think State? so. But, I mean, like, I mean – Right. I mean, but the, vote, the irony is the vote of confidence. I think the only way the vote of confidence has any sort of merit to it is if if, if you actually legitimately say two years or whatever and give them an extension. Oh God, that's not yeah. Right. I agree because at the end of the day, I mean, I agree with I, this. I, what I, what else you? If you, I mean, if you I'm just not say, saying it's the way to go, Rob. I'm just saying that's the only way that it has any sort of weight. That it's got any sort of it. weight on the recruiting trail. That hey, we're this is we're taking our lumps now. We may take some more in 2020, but he will be the head football coach in 2021. Yeah, when 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 the Vols roll to Utah to play Noah Sewell and and and, and Brigham Young, <laughs> don't he'll be one to Brigham Young. <laughs> now, I mean, I can uh, I can see them doing that and, and making it defensible, but you can't tie you can't make you can't increase the finances. Oh, you I can't, agree. you can't make the you can't give him another year and, and increase the buyout and, and all that if you do that. Yeah, to me, you just give him more years. You don't like that's, well, that's fine, and that's just a paper nothing. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they do with Hollis. It's a hard sell on both ends because if you don't make the sale, it's hard to recruit. Okay, and I can promise you, Jeremy Pruitt is telling powers that be, "Hey, I can't go out here and recruit this. I can't put this class together if I'm in limbo and don't know what I'm doing." The flip side of that is, you, you're going to go out here and tell a fan base that is just <laughs> exasperated and done with the last decade. Hey, guys, we're rolling. We're rolling. I mean, you know, well, this is mean, a fan base that's starting to look for Bob Stoops and Urban Meyer and all this other <laughs> stuff nothing, out there. Nothing, you know? and nothing is going to paint that picture 
clearer than what Neyland Stadium is going to look like next Saturday when Georgia comes in here. I think that's going to be a stark reflection well, of where and, Tennessee fans are at. And and while Jeremy's argument maybe ha, ha, certainly has some salience to it, it's also a hard sell in the sense that he has been given anything else he's asked for, he's been given. Oh yeah, the financial commitment, yeah, the, the like, commitment to this program is at a level it's never been at before. So. I mean, so, interesting week, going to be an interesting afternoon on the practice field as you, you go out and do a count to see who's there, who's not there, all of those types of things. Jeremy Pruitt will address the media uh, on Wednesday, uh, but we'll certainly have full practice coverage. We'll have a, a roster account for who was there and who was not there uh, coming up later this afternoon, and, and plenty of discussion going on throughout the week on the general's quarters. By the way, Friday's podcast will be a mailbag edition of the podcast. I'll get the post on the message board for you in, in another couple of days, but we're going to do a mailbag edition for you on Friday. But that's going to do it for this edition of the VolCrest.com podcast. For Rob Lewis, Jesse Simonton, and Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubbs. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great Tuesday.